coming to the stage, man. Real funny guy. Give it up for Wes Curran. Thank you guys so much for coming out here and giving us your attendance and attention. It's very kind of you. Uh, I'm going to start off this set with an inspirational quote. This is something my dad said to me when I was very young. He said to me, Wes, when you fall down seven times, you stand up eight. If you can make it to the front door after that, you're good to drive. <laughs> and then, yeah. A lot of comedians start off their set talking about what they look like. I refrain from doing so. A great philosopher once said, man is only a mystery to himself. So instead of telling you guys what I just think that I look like, I'm going to tell you what other people have said to my face that I look like. Uh, I've gotten you look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> if Shaggy had to put Scooby-Doo down. <laughs> This is a fun crowd, okay, yeah. Let's ride this, okay. Uh, I've gotten you look like Richie Rich if his parents left everything to charity. I've gotten you look like Ron Howard if he was a meth addict. I've gotten you look like high-functioning autism. I don't know why people awe at that one. <laughs> When people, uh, here's the thing, I think some people come to comedy shows thinking awes communicate sympathy. They do not, my friends, laughter communicates sympathy. <laughs> laughter says to me, what a humorous, ridiculous observation we can all take part in. Awes just tell me, that's accurate. That's, <laughs> oh, he said the thing we thought. That's what that means. That is 100% what that means. Laughter is sympathetic. Laughter says like, what? Who would say something like that? Awes are, I would say something like that. That is what I would say. I like opening with jokes about my face. I feel like people develop an opinion about this immediately. There is a cultural divide when people look at my face. Like white people see my face and they say, you look like you tell all your friends to call you the dungeon master, right? <laughs> Seeing that? And then non-white people are like, no, you just look like a serial killer <laughs> that tells his victims to call him the dungeon master. <laughs> like that's. I'll only do one more about what I look like, and it's because it's my absolute favorite. I was doing the show in Austin called The Heckle Factory, where you do your set, the comic gets on stage, the crowd gets to yell whatever they want. It's not this show. Please keep it to yourself. I have so many of these already. Uh, <laughs> I get on the stage, I get the mic out of the stand. Before I get it up to my face to say anything at all, somebody in the back of the room stands up and yells out, you look like how disappointment feels. <laughs> what did we just say about awing? Can we not? <laughs> on that one, could we not? A little bit about me, For I, do, I, I work, I have like a job. I recently, my work took me out to this escape room with 40 of my coworkers. They divided us up into five groups of eight. They put my group in an escape room and on the escape room wall they had things like Rubik's cubes and like sliding puzzles. And they said, okay, using just what's in this room, get out as fast as you can. So I pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah. Point number one, not only did my group get out, everyone in the building got out which I think that's a big victory at an escape room. Any fool can find their way out of an escape room. When you make the employees live with you, that's the mark of a master. That's somebody that understands it. Point number two, not only did I escape the escape room, I wasn't allowed back at the escape room, <laughs> which is the most permanent victory you can have over an escape room. I did it. I won. It's over. The owner was yelling as we were all vacating the building because the alarm was going, I'm going to get you banned from every escape room in the Tri-County area. We're going to put your picture up on the wall. What do you have to say to that? I say we're on the same page, sir. You've taught me all you can. That's what that means. <laughs> Next day I go into work, and my manager sits everybody into this conference room, and he says, okay, our team building event got cut short. I'm not naming any names. I'm not pointing any fingers. What we're going to do today to make up for it, we're all going to sit in this room, and we're going to play conversation games so we all get to know each other better. So I pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I love doing comedy. This is my favorite thing to do. I recently went to my favorite city to do comedy in, New Orleans, Louisiana. Anybody been to New Orleans? Anybody a fan of New Orleans? I love New Orleans so much. It's a nightmare town. Everyone should go once. Everyone should go to New Orleans. If you've never been to New Orleans, I will explain what I love about it in one sentence. New Orleans is the only city I've ever been to where you can get a ghost tour from someone with visible hand, foot, and mouth disease, like that's magical, like that's a great time. Uh, we went on a ghost tour, and uh, all the other tour guides were like excitable, like improvisers in their 20s that were all like, all right guys, we're gonna go on two drinking breaks, one bathroom break. All of a sudden, this five foot tall guy with his face covered in rash, man ponytail, board shorts, walks up to my group and he says, all right, I need to lay down the law real quick because I'm tired of all these negative Yelp reviews. 
Tired of people leaving comments on the internet. Oh man, Steve's tour wasn't scary. Steve didn't scare us once. If you go on Steve's tour, don't even bother showing up. Just leave. He's not going to scare you at all. Listen to me. I'm a professional. If I wanted to put someone down the block and jump out and startle you, I could. I'm not trying to give you a startling five seconds from now. I'm trying to give you a panic attack next week. <laughs> and I said, Steve, don't even bother setting up the merch table because I'm buying what you're selling. I'm on board, okay? Follow you on Twitter. I will follow you to the ends of the earth. You're the only one taking it serious. You're going to be the one to find the ghost. I want to be there when you do it, okay? Let's rent a van. Let's solve mysteries together. I look like Shaggy, and you have canine gingivitis. You're basically a talking dog. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, I, I, here's the thing, if, if I've offended anybody here, uh, if any of you are like, uh, like, uh, look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo or from New Orleans, didn't mean to offend you, I'm just a dumb person, I'm just completely dumb, I'll give you an example. Somebody on my Facebook, so one of my Facebook friends recently posted, 9-11 uh, jokes are never funny. And I can objectively say I agree with that statement, you can make a joke about a million things, you don't need to make a joke about that, but I am an idiot. So I read it as nine out of 11 jokes are never funny. <laughs> Which is why I commented under it, but those ones that are make it all worth it. <laughs> and then under that, I posted a gif of an Italian chef kissing his fingertips. Like that's, that's what I did. I'm not, I'm not proud of it, I'm sorry. Uh, this really is my favorite, I'll, I'll, I'll close on this, this is my favorite thing to do, uh, comedy. I recently, I get to work with the funniest people in the world. I recently worked with a woman from Ontario, Canada. She'd never performed in the States before. She crushed for 30 minutes and then shushed the crowd, made sure they were all silent. She was like, I need to do my closing bit, but I've never performed here before. I need to ask before I do this joke. In the U.S., do you guys have Oxycontin abusers? Right? It's like, well, that would be like walking up Michael Jordan and being like, are you familiar with slam dunks? We invented and mastered the game. Like, that's 100%. <laughs> so she gets off stage and she sits next to me and she's like, I'm like, just so you know, don't worry about, like, we get it. We're hip in the States. We understand Oxycontin. And she's like, I just didn't know. In the U.S., do you guys have Oxycontin abusers? And I said, of course we do. We just don't call them that. We call them moms, obviously. Keep it going for West Coleman, y'all.